Hello everyone, my name is Shahinan Varul. I hope by now all you are aware about the concepts of authentication, firewall and antivirus. Now, I am your instructor who will be covering the second module of cyber security techniques that involves encryption, digital signature and steganography. Objectives of this module are to understand the concepts of cryptography, digital signature and steganography, overview of encryption and steganography algorithms, overview of cryptographic and steganographic tools, understanding cryptography and steganography attacks, to understand the concept of crypt analysis and steg analysis, overview of crypt analysis tools. The first section of this module is cryptography. So, what is cryptography? Basically, cryptography is a combination of two Greek words. Crypto, which means secret, and graphy, which means writing. That is, secret writing which cannot be understandable by the attacker. In another term, it is an art and science of transforming messages from sender to receiver in order to make them secure and immune to attacks, converting the original message to non-readable form and conversion of non-readable form to original message, combinedly called as cryptography. In this figure, you can see some terms like plain text, cipher text, public key and private key. I will explain all these terms in detail in further slides. Basically, the original message which we are trying to convert in non-readable form to prevent it from attackers is called plain text and the converted form of message is known as cipher text. We can perform this process with the help of key. Now, let us discuss the importance of cryptography. As we have already discussed in the definition of cryptography, it is the technique of converting a plain intelligible data into an unintelligible form and again retransforming that message into its original form. So cryptography plays an important role to provide confidentiality, integrity and availability of information. As message is converted into non-readable form so that the attacker will not be able to read that message. In this way, data is confidential between the sender and receiver. By using digital signature, we can maintain integrity of the message, authenticity of the message and non-repudiation. We will discuss the concept of digital signature in further slides. Basic terminologies. These are the basic terminologies that we should understand. First one is plain text. It is the original form of the message which can be easily understand. Cipher text, it is converted form of the original message which cannot be understand by the attacker. Cipher, it is an algorithm for converting the plain text to cipher text with the help of transposition and substitution ciphers. In substitution cipher, a block of plain text is replaced by cipher text and in transposition cipher, the letters of the plain text are shifted about to form the cryptogram. In cipher, or you can call it as encoding or encryption, the process of converting plain text to cipher text. Basically, the algorithm which we are using is cipher and the process for conversion is called encryption or enciphering or encoding. Decipher or decoding or decryption. It is the process of converting cipher text to plain text is called as decryption or deciphering or decoding. Key. It is a critical information that is used by the cipher to convert the plain text to cipher text. It is a random string of characters. Security of cipher depends on the key. It should be only known to the sender and receiver. If an attacker knows the key, he or she can easily identify the original message. If we are using key of shorter length 
an attacker can easily identify the key using brute force attack and with the help of that key attacker will decrypt that message that's why longer keys are difficult to decrypt let us discuss what is the meaning of brute force attack here in this attack the attacker tries every possible key on a piece of cipher text until plain text is obtained for example if we know key is of length 4 and it is made up of using 0 and 1 bit then possible number of keys will be 2 key power 4 is equal to 16 that is the possible combination can be 0000 or 0001 or 0010 and so on so brute force is the process to identify the key with the help of all the possible combinations if length of key is large then it will be difficult to create all the possible combinations this process is called brute force crypt analysis the process of converting the cipher text to plain text without the knowledge of key is called crypt analysis it is also known as code breaking attackers use this technique to decrypt the message without the knowledge of the key. In this image, sender is Bob and receiver is Alice. Bob wants to send message, hello Alice, to Alice. Here, hello Alice is a plain text. So, encryption will be done to convert the plain text to cipher text with the help of key. That is only known to sender and receiver. At the receiver side, after getting the cipher text, decryption will be done to decrypt that cipher text using secret key. Now you can also understand the concept of cryptography with the help of the following example. Suppose you have a suitcase with lock system and you have set the key to lock your suitcase. And now you are going to give your suitcase to your brother. In your way, you kept your suitcase in a shop and busy in talking to your friend on mobile phone. One thief came and trying to open your lock using possible combination of keys. That is, attacker is trying to perform brute force attack. If he is successful to open your lock, this process is called crypt analysis or code breaking. Here, you are the sender and your brother is the receiver. Suitcase is a message which you are going to send him. Suitcase lock is the key. Thief is an attacker. Before locking things inside the suitcase is the plain text. And after locking things inside suitcase is the cipher text. So process of locking your suitcase is the encryption and unlocking the suitcase by your brother using key is the process of decryption. I hope you have clearly understood the basic terminologies which we will use in cryptography. So let's start with the encryption. Basically it is a mechanism for hiding information by turning readable text into a stream of gibberish in such a way that someone with the proper key can make it readable again. It is a process of converting the plain text to cipher text in such a way that the person who has key will only be able to read that message. What is the use of encryption? The answer of this question is that it is used to secure health records, credit card information, tax records, etc. If these information are not encrypted and easily available, then anyone can misuse to our personal information. Suppose our debit card information is stored as a plain text, then an attacker can easily get our debit card number, name on card and so on. It is also used to protect the credentials used for authentication. Our username and passwords are also stored in encrypted form. It maintains privacy also. Encryption is used to provide confidentiality to our private information. Types of cryptography. There are two types of cryptography. First one is symmetric key cryptography. It is also known as secret key cryptography. And the other one is asymmetric key cryptography. It is also known as public key cryptography. In symmetric key cryptography, only one key is used for both the encryption and decryption process. 
This key should be secret between the sender and receiver. We have different symmetric key algorithms like AES that is advanced encryption standard, DES data encryption standard, 3DES triple data encryption standard, IDE that is international data encryption algorithm. In symmetric key encryption after coding of data the key is sent to the destination user via some other medium like postal service, telephone etc. Because if the key is obtained by the hacker, the security of the data is compromised. Key distribution is a complex task because the security of key while transmission is itself an issue. To avoid the transfer of key, a method called asymmetric key encryption also known as public key encryption is used. In this diagram, you can see at the sender side, the plain text is encrypted using shared secret key and it is converted to ciphertext. Then ciphertext is received by the receiver and will be decrypted to plain text using the same shared secret key. The ciphertext is received by the receiver and will be decrypted to plain text using the same shared secret key. Shared key should be only known to sender and receiver. For example, as I have discussed earlier, if you have a suitcase with lock system, you have set the key to lock your suitcase and you send that to your brother. In this case, you will have to inform the key to your brother to open that suitcase. This key will be your shared secret key. Pros and cons of symmetric key cryptography. Because symmetric key cryptography uses the same key for both encryption and decryption, it is much faster than public key cryptography. It is easier to implement and generally requires less processing power. Both the encryption and decryption done on blocks, not by bits. A disadvantage of symmetric key cryptography is that the two parties sending messages to each other must agree to use the same secret key before they start transmitting secure information. This may be impossible depending on the circumstances because the two parties who want to communicate with each other through a secure means may be on different sides of the world. And this means that they will need a secure way to tell each other what the secret key will be. If there were a secure way to do this, then the cryptography would not have been necessary in the first place in order to create that secure channel. So sharing of secret key is an issue. If the shared secret key is compromised, the more damage can occur. Attacker can read the whole secret information. Now asymmetric key cryptography. In public key cryptography, two different keys are used for both encryption and decryption. Both the sender and receiver has two keys. One is public key and the other one is private key. Public keys are available publicly in public key server and it can be accessible by anyone. Encryption is done using the public key of receiver and decryption is done using the private key of the receiver. Both the public key and private key has some relation that ensures that if the message is encrypted by public key, then the message will only be decrypted by corresponding private key. Public key server stores the public keys of all the users which is available to everyone so that any person can send message to anyone but the person who has a private key will only be able to decrypt that message. Combination of public key and private key is called key pair. We have some public key encryption algorithms. First one is RSA. Name of this algorithm is on the name of three scientists that is Ronald Rivest, Adi Shamir and Len Adleman. Second one is Algamal encryption and third one is elliptic curve. In this figure, you can see that original text is encrypted using public key of the receiver and decrypted using private key of the receiver. Private key should be confidential and public keys should be available to all. There is no concept of sharing the key 
unlike symmetric key cryptography. You can better understand the concept of asymmetric key with the help of this example. Suppose I want to send an email to you. What will be the thing that I should know to send an email to you? Obviously, your email address. So, your email address is publicly available and anyone can send you an email. You will have to use your email password to log into your account to check all the mails. So, in this case, I am the sender and you are the receiver. Your email address is your public key and your password to open the mail account is your private key. Here, email is sent with the public key of yours that is receiver and email can be opened with the help of your private key that is receiver's private key. Now, pros and cons of asymmetric key cryptography. Pros. It is convenient to use and there is no need to share key between sender and receiver. The advantage of using public key cryptography is that the public key used for encryption does not need to remain secure. That is why it is called public because it does not matter if other people know about it. It is more secure in comparison to symmetric key cryptography because there is no concept of sharing the secret key. It ensures non-repudiation and detects tampering using digital signature. As we have already discussed that digital signature ensures integrity, authenticity and non-repudiation, digital signature is done using the concept of public key cryptography. The disadvantages of asymmetric key cryptography are, first one is public key encryption is slow as compared with symmetric key encryption which means that is it is not suitable for decrypting bulk messages because in symmetric key encryption Block of data is encrypted and in public key cryptography, encryption is done bit by bit. The other drawback is when you lose your private key, your received messages will not be decrypted. What often happens is that people use public key cryptography to create a shared session key and then they communicate through symmetric key cryptography using the shared session key. This way, they can get the best of both worlds, the performance or speed of shared secret key cryptography along with the convenience of public key cryptography. This is called hybrid key cryptography. Now real life examples of cryptography, as we are using cryptography in our daily life, in online banking, whenever you type your password, it first encrypted and then sent to the server for authentication. In e-commerce, on any online shopping website, whenever we save our debit card information, it is saved in encrypted form. Student, health, tax records, all our personal records that are saved in encrypted form so that no one can misuse to our personal information. In social networking, like our messages in WhatsApp are shared between sender and receiver in encrypted form so that the attacker could not be able to read that messages. Now cryptography primitives, basically cryptography primitives are nothing but the tools and techniques in cryptography that can be selectively used to provide a set of desired security services. We will discuss these concepts in detail also. First primitive is encryption. Encryption is a mechanism for hiding information by turning readable text into a stream of gibberish in such a way that someone with the proper key can make it readable again. The second one is hash function as you have already studied hashing in first module. A hash function is any function that can be used to map data of arbitrary size to data of a fixed size. Message authentication codes or you can say MAC. A message authentication code sometimes known as a tag. It is a short piece of information used to authenticate a message. In other words, to confirm that the message came from the stated sender has not been changed. Digital signatures, it is a digital code that is generated and authenticated by public key encryption which is attached to an electronically transmitted document to verify its content and the sender's identity. This is the matrix for cryptography objectives and cryptography primitives. Here you can see that 
encryption only ensures confidentiality because as we know data is transmitted in encrypted form between the sender and receiver therefore it will be available to sender and receiver only but if an attacker in between fetch that encrypted data and send his data in encrypted form using the public key of receiver that is publicly available in this case receiver will not be able to identify that whether the received message has been sent by the sender or an attacker hashing only ensures integrity because in hashing we create hash code of the message and it is unique for every message suppose an attacker modifies the message between the transmission then at the receiver side the hash code of the received message will be changed mac ensures integrity and authenticity of the message as we know mac is similar to digital signature but it does not ensure non repudiation because in mac we are not using the concept of private key we use concept of shared secret key in mac digital signature ensure integrity authentication and non repudiation how it ensures all the three factors that i will discuss in digital signature module cryptography under various media we can use any media for the encryption and decryption process input can be anything like text images audio video etc encryption algorithm will convert the original form of input to the cipher form and decryption algorithm will convert the cipher form to the original form cryptography tools we have various cryptography tools like veracrypt xcrypt folder lock crypto expert 8 certain safe in which various encryption algorithms like ds 3ds rsa aes have already been implemented for the encryption and decryption process you can simply use these tools after installing into your system there is no need to implement encryption algorithms for the encryption process all these softwares are open source that is they are freely available on internet links for downloading these softwares are also given in the slide this is the graphical user interface of advanced encryption package 2017 cryptography tool with the help of encrypt and decrypt buttons marked in red you can encrypt and decrypt the file or message by selecting the required algorithm in algorithm section this is the gui of bc text encoder cryptography tool you can browse the file which you want to encrypt using the file icon or simply you can write the text in the specified area which you want to encrypt and using encode button the encoded message will be displayed here and with the help of decode button you will get the decoded message you can browse the file which you want to encrypt using the file icon or simply you can write the text in the specified area which you want to encrypt and using encode button the encoded message will be displayed here and with the help of decode button you will get the decoded message in encode by section enter the key from which the message will be encoded now crypt analysis as we have already discussed about the concept of crypt analysis it is the process of transforming non readable form of message to readable form without the knowledge of key using different code breaking methodologies it is also known as code breaking we have different code breaking methodologies one can measure the strength of an encryption algorithm using various code breaking techniques attackers can use these techniques to get the original message without having key first one is brute force attack attacker tries all the possible combinations to discover the cryptographic keys in frequency analysis attacker tries to find out the occurrence of the letters in cipher text to discover the plain text it works on the fact that in any given stretch of written language certain letters and combination of letters occur with varying frequencies in trickery and deceit methodology attacker uses social engineering techniques to get the cryptography keys here social engineering means psychological manipulation of people into performing actions or divulging confidential information for example an attacker tries to get your email password and generally you are using your pet name as a password then in that case attacker will try to get your pet name from you by asking different questions and in that questions he will ask your pet name in one time pad methodology attacker chooses randomly 
non repeating group of letters or number keys to get to the original message there are different tools that can be used for crypt analysis with the help of these tools you will be able to decrypt the encrypted message without having the information of key these tools are cryptobench cryptol ganzua evercrack alpha peeler links for downloading these softwares is given in the slide now as i have mentioned digital signature under cryptography module it is also one of the cyber security technique let us discuss about digital signature it is an electronic signature that can be used to authenticate the identity of the sender of a message or the signer of a document and possibly to ensure that the original content of the message or document that has been sent is unchanged digital signatures are based on public key cryptography digital signatures are used to verify whether a document sent by a person is really sent by him and has not been changed in the route through which it came a standard signature on a document and a digital signature are both similar in function as we are signing a document to give the assurance that it is signed by me and i am an authentic user similarly digital signature is used to sign the digital documents to authenticate the sender so that he or she cannot deny that he has sent the message the sender's authenticity and message's integrity is both validated by the digital signature the digital signature is the second piece of information which is added to the message a digital signature can be used with any kind of message whether it is encrypted or not so the receiver can be sure of the sender's identity and the message arrived has not changed or modified digital signatures make it difficult for the signer to deny having signed something assuming their private key has not been compromised as the digital signature is unique to both the document and the signer and it binds them together this property is called non repudiation the diagram shows the digital signature process here m denotes the message and s denotes the signature ls is the sender who wants to send message to bob who is the receiver two algorithms will be involved in digital signature process first one is signing algorithm and the second one is verifying algorithm signing will be done at the sender side and verification will be done at the receiver side now what is the use of keys in digital signature process in signing algorithm ls uses her private key represented by red color in given figure to sign the message the message and the signature are sent to bob in verifying algorithm bob receives the message and the signature and applies the verifying algorithm to the combination bob uses ls's public key that is represented by black in color to verify the authentication and integrity of the message along with non repudiation if the result is true the message is accepted otherwise it is rejected asymmetric key cryptography uses the public and private keys of the receiver whereas a digital signature uses the private and public keys of the sender in this slide process of signing the digest is discussed it is done by encrypting the hash value of a message using private key of the sender and at the receiver side hash value is decrypted using the public key of sender in this way a digital signature ensures message authentication that is a secure digital signature scheme like a secure conventional signature can provide message authentication message integrity that is the integrity of the message is preserved even if we sign the whole message because we cannot get the same signature if the message is changed and the third one is non repudiation that is sender cannot deny sending the message if he has signed the message with his private key in this diagram you can see the complete process of digital signature first of all hash value of message is calculated using hash function then encrypt the calculated hash code using private key of sender then document plus encrypted hash value will be sent to the receiver this process is called creation of digitally signed document this digitally signed document is then received by receiver receiver will get the original document 
plus encrypted hash value. First, he or she will decrypt the hash code using the public key of the sender. Then he or she will calculate the hash code of that document. The received hash code and calculated hash code will be compared by the receiver. If both the codes are equal, that means there is no change or modification has been done in the document during the transmission. This process is called verifying the digital signature. Now, as we learn that digital signature provides integrity, authenticity and non-repudiation. But does it provide confidentiality? The answer to the previous question is no. A digital signature does not provide privacy or confidentiality. If there is a need for privacy, another layer of encryption or decryption must be applied that uses symmetric key cryptography. That means a digital signature can directly provide the message integrity, message authentication and non-repudiation. But for message confidentiality, we still need encryption or decryption. You can see the whole process in this slide which we discussed in previously. The whole process to maintain confidentiality by using digital signature is, first of all, the message is signed using sender's private key. Then the signed message is encrypted using receiver's public key. Then encrypted message and signature are sent to the receiver. Then receiver receives the encrypted message and signature which is first decrypted using receiver's private key. Then the decrypted message is verified using sender's public key. If the result is true, the message is accepted. Otherwise, it is rejected. This is how confidentiality is ensured using digital signature. There are three types of attacks that are possible on digital signature. First one is key only attack. The attacker is only given a public verification key. Attacker only knows signer's public key. With the help of that public key, attacker tries to get the private key of the signer. Second one is known message attack. The attacker is given valid signatures for a variety of messages known by the attacker but not chosen by the attacker. Adversary has signatures for a set of messages which are known by the adversary but not chosen by him. Third one is chosen message attack. The attacker first learns signatures on arbitrary messages of the attacker's choice. Messages are chosen by the adversary. Then methodologies to break a signature. First one is total break. In this technique, adversary is able to compute the signer's private key. In this way, the attacker can change or modify any message and encrypt hash code of that message with the computed private key of sender. Now, the total control is in attacker's hand. Second is existential forgery. It is the creation of any message or signature pair m, s by an attacker where s was not produced by the legitimate signer. Basically, signature was produced by the attacker. Third one is selective forgery. It is the creation of any message or signature pair that is m, s by the attacker where m has been chosen by the adversary prior to the attack. Basically, message was chosen by the attacker before the attack happens. After learning the concept of cryptography and digital signature, now I am going to discuss about the concept of steganography. So, what is steganography? Steganography is a Greek word which is a combination of two words that is stegno which means covered and graphy which means writing that is covered writing. Steganography is the practice of hiding private or sensitive information within something that appears to be nothing out of the usual. That is, it is the process of hiding secret information in any medium like image, audio, video, etc. We can hide anything inside any medium. That is, if we want to hide message inside image, want to hide image inside image, hide audio inside image, etc. These are the possible combinations. Steganography is a technique of hiding a secret message within an ordinary message 
and extracting it at the destination to maintain confidentiality of data. Basic terminologies related to steganography. Before starting the discussion on steganography, you should understand these terms. Carrier or cover file, an original message or a file in which hidden information will be stored inside of it. Stego medium, the medium in which information is hidden that is carrier plus hidden information is called stego medium. Embedded or payload, the information which is to be hidden or concealed. Steg analysis, the process of detecting hidden information inside a file is called steg analysis. For example, suppose you want to send a letter to your friend and you have put it inside the envelope to hide it from others. In this case, envelope is cover file, letter is payload, envelope with letter is the stego medium. If another friend came to your room and tried to open that letter, this attempt is called steg analysis. This is the block diagram of a steganography. Secret message will be embedded in cover media with the help of some cryptography technique using a stego key to generate a stego media. That is the cover media with message hidden inside it. The cover media and message can be anything like image, audio, video, text, etc. The medium of a stego document will be same as the medium of cover document because secret message is hidden inside it. So the medium of hidden message doesn't matter. In this diagram, you can see that there's a message in which your account details are given and you want to send this information to your friend. You can hide this information within an image. First image is original image and the second image is the image with message embedded in it. In this figure, you can check that with the help of properties of image, that size of image after embedding of message is increased in comparison to the size of original message. You can see that the size of image before embedding the information is 80 kilobyte, but after embedding the size of image becomes 92 kilobyte. The goal of steganography is to hide messages in such a way that no one apart from the intended recipient even knows that a message has been sent. The main objective is to hide the information to prevent it from unauthorized user. This can be done by hiding the secret information into cover media without affecting the secret information. History of steganography As steganography is not a new technique, it has been in use from ancient times. The first steganographic technique was developed in ancient Greece around 440 BC. The Greek ruler Histeus employed an early version of steganography which involved shaving the head of a slave, tattooing the message on the slave's scalp, waiting for the growth of hair to disclose the secret message and sending the slave on his way to deliver the message. The recipient would have the slave's head to uncover the message. The recipient would reply in the same form of steganography. In the same time period, another early form of steganography was employed. This method involves Demaratus who wrote a message to the Spartans warning of imminent invasions from Xerxes. The message was carved on the wood of wax tablet and then covered with a fresh layer of wax. This seemingly blank tablet was delivered with its hidden message successfully. It was also used in First and Second World Wars. During the American Revolutionary War, both the British and American forces used various forms of invisible inks. Invisible ink involved common sources. This included milk, vinegar, fruit juice and urine for the hidden text. To decipher these hidden messages required light or heat. During World War II, the Germans introduced microdots. The microdots were complete documents, pictures and plans reduced in size to the size of a period and attached to common paper work. Null ciphers were also used to pass secret messages. 
Null ciphers are unencrypted messages with real messages embedded in the current text. Hidden messages were hard to interpret within the innocent messages. An example of an innocent message containing a null cipher is fishing fresh water bends and salt water coasts rewards anyone feeling stressed. Resourceful anglers usually find masterful leapers fun and admit salt fish rank overwhelming any day. By taking the third letter in each word, the following message emerges. Send lawyers, guns and money. We can hide data in any medium like text, images, audio, video, etc. We can classify the stenography on the basis of their cover medium as image stenography, document stenography, folder stenography, video stenography, audio stenography and spam or email stenography. Let us discuss image stenography in detail. In image stenography, the information is hidden in image files of different formats such as .png, .jpg, .bmp etc. Image stenography tools replace redundant bits of image data with the message in such a way that the effect cannot be detected by human eyes. There are many tools available on internet which we can use for image stenography. Some of the image stenography techniques are LSB insertion, masking and filtering. We have various tools that are used for image stenography, Quickstigo, Cryptapex, Hide in Picture, GIF Shuffle, PHP Class Stream stenography and the links for all the softwares are already given in the slide. Now document stenography, it is a technique of hiding secret messages transferred in the form of documents. It includes addition of white spaces and taps at the end of the lines. Tools for document stenography, StegJ, Office XML, Snow, Data Stash, Hiden, these are the tools that we can use for document stenography. Folder stenography, in folder stenography, files are hidden and encrypted within a folder and do not appear to normal Windows applications, including Windows Explorer. Folder lock, hide folder 5, WinMend folder hidden, Invisible Secrets 4, Max folder secure are the softwares used for folder stenography. Video stenography, it refers to hiding secret information into a carrier video file. The information is hidden in video files of different formats such as .avi, .mpg4, .wmv, etc. Discrete cosine transform that is DCT manipulation is used to add secret data at the time of the transformation process of video. Tools for video stenography are RT stenography, stego stick, open puff, MSU stego video. Audio stenography refers to hiding secret information in audio files such as .mp3, .rm, .wav etc. These are the extensions for audio files. Information can be hidden in audio file by using LSB or by using frequencies that are inaudible to the human ear that is greater than 20,000 hertz. Some of the audio stenography methods are eco data hiding, spread spectrum method, LSB coding, tone insertion, face encoding, etc. Tools for audio stenography are Bitcrypt, Silent Eye, Chaos Universal, Stego stick, MP3 Stego. Now, spam or email stenography. It refers to the technique of sending secret messages by hiding them in spam or email messages. Spam emails help to communicate secretly by embedding the secret messages in some way and hiding the embedded data in the spam emails. Spam mimic is a spam or email stenography tool that encodes the secret message into an innocent looking spam emails. We have various technographic tools that are specifically designed for mobile phones. These are SpyPix, 
pixel not hidden messages, pocket stego, stegography image, and stego sec. How stegography works? Now, let us discuss how the data is secretly embedded inside the cover file without being noticed. The medium of cover file could be an image, video, audio, etc., which is used to embed secret data. The most common stegography technique using mostly image and sound carrier files is called least significant bit substitution, LSBS, or overwriting. As the name implies, LSBS involves overwriting the bit with the lowest arithmetic value. The result of this process alters the original output very slightly. This is done slightly enough to be unlikely to be detected from human senses. With the help of this example, we can easily understand how secret messages are embedded inside cover or carrier file. Suppose, binary code of carrier file is given in this slide. Underlined bits in the slide are least significant bits. We have to embed the binary code of message in these least significant bits of cover file. Suppose, we have to embed a character G in cover file and the sky value of G is 71. Binary code for 71 is 01001. Embed all the bits of G in cover file as a least significant bit. Only half of the least significant bits were changed in the given sample. And yet, the character G has been discreetly embedded into the sequence. Judging from the amount of bits needed to make even the simplest of files, it is easy to imagine just how much hidden data can be secretly embedded using least significant bit substitution. In this figure, you can see an image file which is used as a cover medium. As you know, the smallest unit of image is a pixel and there are three components present in a color image that is RGB, red, green and blue component. Each color image is made up of RGB components. Each pixel of a high resolution image is represented by 3 bytes, that is 24 bits. If the three least significant bits of this 24 bits are altered and used for hiding the data, the resultant image after embedded the data into it will have unnoticeable change in the image. And only a very experienced and trained eyes can detect this change. In this way, every pixel can be used to hide three bits of information. There's a message secret, which you want to hide inside the image. First of all, a sky value of message will be converted to the binary code and then that binary value will be embedded in the binary value of the pixel. Although the examples discussed above would be a perfectly viable way to use LSBS. It is too basic to be practical. The main goal of stegography is to shield the presence of a hidden message from human senses. However, modern stegography detection applications and techniques that is steg analysis has altered those goals to include securing the hidden message from both human senses and digital applications alike. Due to this reason, almost all stegography applications use some kind of randomization technique in which the altered least significant bits are spread out randomly across the carrier file. This practice creates the biggest obstacle for steg analysis applications. Now detecting stegography or we can say as steg analysis it is the art of detecting stegography is steg analysis. We can detect stegography with the help of following tools like send secret, stegography 8.1, steg detect, header man, etc. The information hiding process changes the statistical properties of the cover, which is a steg analyst attempts to detect. The process of attempting to detect statistical traces is called statistical steg analysis. Here, statistical traces means statistical value of image like mean, median, etc. will change if some message is hidden inside it. Steg analysis 
can only detect that some information is hidden but cannot identify what information is hidden. Statistical stack analysis can be done through histogram technique. In this image, first image is original and second is stego image. You can see the difference in histograms of both the images. By looking the histograms of original and stego image, one can detect that something is inside the image. Challenges of stick analysis. Stick analysis is not an easy task. There are various challenges that an attacker face. It can be possible that suspect information stream may or may not have encoded hidden data. Efficient and accurate detection of hidden content within digital images is difficult. The message might have been encrypted before inserting into a file or signal. Some of the suspect signals or files may have irrelevant data or noise encoded into them. So these are the challenges of STEG analysis. Various STEG analysis tools with their links from where you can download these softwares are given. These softwares are STEG Alizer SS, Stegnography Studio, STEG Alizer AS, STEG Alizer RTS, Virtual Stegnographic Laboratory, that is VSL. Tools of the trade for stegnography. Now, I will show you the working of one stegnography tool named HXT, that is Hex Editor. It is an open source tool that can be downloaded and installed easily. Here, we have taken an example of two images, namely Obama.jpg and Osama.jpg, through which we will try to understand the concept of stegnography. As we are dealing with Osama and Obama, Let's download one picture each of both. As you can see, I have downloaded obama.jpg and osama.jpg. Look at the first four bytes of data of the image. Can you see ffd8, ffe0 in hex or yoya in special character in a sky? These are called magic numbers or file signature. A jpg basically has ffd8, ffe0 in header and ends with ffd9 in trailer. Now, try to rename obama.jpg into obama.mp3 and see what happens. As you can see, the extension change in the file made it be detected as an audio file by my default mp3 player. Now, try playing it. Obviously, error, right? You cannot expect an image to play music for you. Now, let's reopen that change mp3 file with hxt. Do you see the header and trailer of jpg in this mp3 file? Can you suspect this mp3 file to be a jpg file? Content of both obama.jpg and obama.mp3 are same. To validate your assumption, just change the file extension to .jpg and see what it has in store for you. Else just open that mp3 file with your default. Else just open that mp3 file with your default image viewer. Sounds interesting, right? Now let's try adding some data to obama.jpg, a simple text line that will do. To do it, just open your obama.jpg file in hxt. At the end of the file, add some content, any statement. This can be done simply by typing at the end of hxt. The content in red is what I have added. The corresponding hex value can be seen here. Just save the file with any name with extension .jpg. Let me save it with obama.jpg itself. When you will open obama.jpg with hex editor, you will find the text which I have embedded. Yes, we can see that text in the hex data and even the image opens flawlessly in your image viewers. In this image, text is hidden inside it and the image opens without any error. This is a basic example of applying stenography to add text in an image file. Now, I have a task for you guys. Till now, 
we have tried to hide some text in an image file that is obama.jpg now you all can try to hide an image inside another image file and see what happens try to hide osama.jpg inside obama.jpg now applications of steganography it is used in confidential communication and secret data storing it is used in protection of data alteration as it is also used for watermarking to protect copyright basically copyright is used to protect the ownership it is also used in various fields like in defense organization it is used to hide secret communication from enemies in intelligence agencies for the security of persons private information in government agencies to hide critical data like criminal records in smart identity cards our personal information is embedded into our image in medical patient details are embedded within our image advantages of steganography it has various pros first one is difficult to detect because message is hidden inside the cover file only receiver can identify that the steganography can be used by the intelligence agencies for transmitting their secret information with the help of different available tools we can do steganography faster disadvantages of steganography if this technique is used by wrong hands like hackers terrorists criminals it can be very much dangerous for all as we have discussed in previous slides as data is hidden inside the cover file then the size of the original file will increase the confidentiality of information is maintained by the algorithms and if the algorithms are known then it's all over information leakage may occur and it leads to the unauthorized access of data as we have learned the concept of both cryptography and steganography now we will discuss the difference between them we can compare both steganography and cryptography on the basis of the following factors like basic goal of these structure of the message popularity supported security principles implementation medium techniques and type of attack as we have already seen that steganography is the cover writing and cryptography is secret writing the goal of steganography is secret communication and goal of cryptography is data protection the structure of original message is not altered as it is hidden inside cover file but in cryptography the original message is altered to change into non readable form as steganography is less popular in comparison to cryptography because cryptography is widely used steganography ensures confidentiality and authentication while cryptography ensures confidentiality integrity authentication and non repudiation both steganography and cryptography can be implemented on any media like audio video image text etc different techniques used for steganography are spatial domain transform or frequency domain and model based while in cryptography transposition substitution stream cipher block cipher are used the attempt to detect steganography is called steg analysis and to break the encryption without the knowledge of key is called crypt analysis now the summary of the module as we have learned about cryptography digital signature and steganography in this module let's discuss in short cryptography is the conversion of data into a scrambled code that is encrypted and sent across a private or public network symmetric encryption uses the same key for encryption and it does for decryption and asymmetric encryption uses different encryption keys to, for encryption and decryption digital signature uses asymmetric cryptography to simulate the security properties of a signature in digital rather than a, in a written form steganography is the process of hiding secret information inside another medium to prevent it from unauthorized access cryptography and steganography attacks are based on the assumption that the crypt analyst has access to the encrypted and stego information respectively i hope you people have learned a lot from this module thank you